David here from Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have something very cool to share. I'm going to talk about a very special pen from an interesting company. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit about the manufacturer and show you the, the parts and features of this pen, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements and some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, that sounds like a lot, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, this year, Fountain Pen Day fell on my birthday. So I used this as an excuse to purchase what I had hoped would be a very special pen that would stand out from anything currently in my collection. Um, I decided to purchase, purchase a pen from the Edison Pen Company. Um, Edison is a, a small manufacturer based out of Milan, Ohio, uh, which is the boyhood home of Thomas Edison and who served as an inspiration behind the naming of the company. Uh, it was founded in 2007 by Brian Gray and Brian began making his pens as a hobby with really no intentions of it becoming a business. Uh, once he began to share his work with others in the fountain pen community, people began to ask about purchasing the pens and sales grew up enough over time that Brian was actually finally able to quit his day job. His wife joined the company, they hired on some additional help, and he was able to turn his hobby into a career. And shouldn't we all be so lucky? So Edison has a production line of a few models that they offer through a limited number of retailers like Anderson, uh, Goulet, Van Ness, just to name a few. There's others as well. Uh, then they have their signature line, which is comprised of about 15 different models. Uh, and the awesome thing about selecting a pen from Edison is that they have hundreds of different materials, awesome materials, as well as several different filling systems. Uh, ordering a pen from Edison is a unique experience as well. Um, if you go to their site, you won't find any add to cart buttons or anything like that. Uh, if you're interested in one of their pens, you send an email to Brian that will begin a conversation. And through this conversation, you'll select the model you want, the material you prefer, and what nib you would like as well. Uh, something neat is that uh, Brian is very open to customizations. So if you like one pen model, but the filling system on another model, that Brian will take it as a challenge to give you exactly what you're looking for. Now, not everything is possible, but if it is, then he wants to work with you and make you, uh, make you happy. Once you finalize your order, uh, that you'll be provided an estimated turnaround time, which is typically maybe about two to 10 weeks, depending on production schedule. Um, I ordered my pen at the beginning of November and received it at the end of January. Um, there were a couple of holiday and weeks, weeks in there, so that's why the wait was a little bit longer. But uh, the original ETA was very close to when it was completed, so that uh, they were, they were uh, 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 very close to their production schedule and what they promised. Uh, once your pen is completed, then Brian will send you some nice pictures of your pen so you can give it a final approval before it's shipped. So enough about the process. Uh, let's take a look at the pen. Uh, the pen arrived in this box right here, which has a nice faux cro crocodile finish to it. And inside are a couple of bookmarks. There is one right here that has a nice a couple of nice pictures of some of Edison's models and some of their materials. Uh, and then there was also a, a nice little metal bookmark here. Nice little metal bookmark with the Edison pens logo, which was kind of nice. There is some silicone grease, which is always nice to have. And uh, then also included was a nice thank you letter and some care instructions. Uh, and things like that from Brian. So it was nice information to have. So enough about that. Let's look at the pen. Um, that this is the Edison Menlo pump filler uh, in the light blue translucent, translucent acrylic swirl. Um, when I first saw this material, I was just stunned. This is just amazing. Uh, I thought this was the most beautiful pen I'd ever seen. I mean, just look at that. The swirls are incredible here. There is a three-dimensionality to them that makes it different from anything else I had ever seen. And now that I've seen it live in person, I love it even more. It's truly stunning and vibrant. Um, the pen is a classic torpedo shape. Uh, the finial tapers to a smooth point. There's a bit of a point here, but it's very smooth. Uh, we have a very thin clip band and then we have the clip itself 
it's a bit on the, the plain side, uh, but it has a, a decent amount of tension to it. And, and while it's a bit plain, I feel it matches the style of the pen well. Uh, and with and the silver complements the blue pattern better than uh, a gold trim would have. Um, the cap is translucent, so you can see the nib and feed in here. Um, I understand why it's difficult to do so, but I wish you could um, always make it so that whenever, and it's not just an issue with this pen, it's with any pen with a translucent cap, so that when the pen is capped that the nib um, lines up exactly with the clip, but that's just me being a little anal about this stuff, but um, I understand the technical limitations of why that's difficult to do. Just a dream. Uh, then we have a, uh, a, a thin cap band, which is inlaid into the cap. And while you can feel the edge of the material just a tiny bit, it, it's very, very smooth. Uh, and then the cap tapers down just slightly, uh, minimizing the step down transition to the barrel, which is again, and the transition again is, is very, very smooth. Engraved on the side of the band is Edison Penn's Menlo. Uh, here's a picture of it. The engraving is small and subtle, and I like it like that. Um, the barrel tapers down to a rounded end, and then we have a blind cap, which we'll look at in just a bit here. The cap twists off, and we have a very nice section that has a bit of a flare and then widens uh, a bit. The threads are, are very smooth and virtually unnoticeable when you're gripping the pen. And then there is a little flat portion because the threads are, are set a little bit deeper in, in the cap. There is a, a small step up to the rest of the barrel and it's, again, it's not sharp as well. Then we have this nib. Uh, it's a number six Yovo. And first of all, I think it looks beautiful. The swirling lines look really nice, and I like the Edison Company logo. Uh, this is a medium steel nib, and uh, here's a picture of the feed as well, which I like. It, it kind of has a reddish sheen to it that, that's really interesting. For an extra $100, you can get a, a gold nib, but honestly, I, I'm perfectly happy with this one. Uh, Brian tunes every single nib before it leaves his shop, and, and it really shows. Uh, without a doubt, this is the smoothest steel nib in my collection, the smoothest nib right out of the box. Uh, and Brian says that he, he tunes it to a seven, seven out of 10 flow, very smooth with just a touch of feedback. And I feel that's an accurate description. Um, I really have no complaints about the nib. Um, it, it is very stiff with virtually no spring, but it works for this pen, and it truly is a pleasure to write with. Um, the pen is is very comfortable to hold and is a bit on the light side, even with the uh, the brass piston mechanism in the back. The cap posts well and doesn't uh, back weight the pen whatsoever. So let's remove the blind cap. So we could take a look at it here. The pump mechanism is modeled after the Parker Vacuumatic filling system. In fact, all of the parts of the mechanism between the Vacuumatic and the Minlo are interchangeable. So if down the line something needs to be replaced, then parts are readily available. Or if you have someone that does some work on uh, Vacuumatics, that they would be able to do work on this pen as well. Um, in order to fill the pen, what you do is you submerge the, pen, submerge the pen and ink and then simply depress the pump a few times. Uh, and inside the barrel is a feeder tube which will then suck up the ink uh, each, uh, of each pump and give you a, a, actually a very decent fill. Um, I found that this pen likes to write better the more ink it has in it. It isn't a pen you can kind of run dry to the end. Once the ink level gets really low, then the nib will get a little bit finicky. So you just want to make sure that you maintain a decent amount of ink in the pen. Um, the pen has very light tolerances. Every single joint is virtually seamless. Like when I put the blind cap on here, uh, you could barely feel this joint. Um, uh, it's just very, very nice. Uh, something I really appreciate about the craftsmanship is the Men Menlo has to do with the swirls. Um, of all the pieces of the pen, uh, the, the cap, the section, the barrel, the blind cap, I mean, they're all separate pieces uh, of stock and that um, it would be impossible to have the pattern match exactly throughout each transition. Um, 
And I don't know if I just got lucky, but the patterns on the, the finial and the blind cap uh, really match up well. I don't know if you can really see it here, but they, they do match up well and it's not too stark of a, a transition. And the same with the, the blind cap. It's just nice transition between the, uh, the, the patterns here. Um, and then the other transitions like the section to the barrel and the cap to the barrel when it's capped, um, the material being translucent has an effect of kind of melding the two patterns together. It kind of melds the two together in order to make for a, a smoother visual transition, which I, I really, really like. Uh, the artisanship put into this pen is super, superb. Um, uh, Brian has a very cool video that details what goes into the making of a Menlo pump filler. Uh, it's fascinating to watch. Um, uh, here's some highlights uh, of the video which are used with permission. Here's the ribbon stock uh, in its raw form. It just looks amazing. You can really see how it ribbons uh, throughout the uh, entire material. And then they put it in their industrial machine here. And um, I thought it was interesting how the material spins, but the, uh, the drill bits actually uh, stay where they're at. Uh, and this is a barrel after the initial machining is done to it. And now it's looking more like a barrel and then now some of the the craftsmanship comes in to where there is um, lots of sanding and filing filing and and polishing that that really go into this and then some uh, uh, so a lot of buffing in order to get this thing looking perfect and, and it does and then Brian tunes every single nib before it goes out and that's what a finished product looks like so there's a link to the video in the, uh, the notes below this re review here in YouTube, uh, as well as a link to Edison Pens. Uh, it's over 20 minutes in length and, and very much worthwhile a watch. Uh, I've watched it several times and I'm just fascinated every time I see it. Um, it does uh, an excellent job of showing the care and attention that goes into to each pen that, uh, that Ed Edison, Edison produces. At $350, this is not an inexpensive pen. Uh, I feel though the cost is justified. Uh, the nib is incredible. The craftsmanship is impeccable and the material is just absolutely stunning. Uh, it's inked up right now and so that's why it's dark in here or else it would be more translucent like the cap. Uh, this is uh, an amazing pen. I, I know that it's January and we'll see how I feel in 11 months, but, but I have a feeling this Menlo will have a very prominent place in my uh, top 10 pens of 2016. So next I'll show you some measurements, some size comparisons, and then we'll do a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Edison Menlo pump filler in the uh, blue translucent acrylic swirl. Uh, here it is compared to a, uh, a Pilot Metropolitan and also a Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, or we can see what it looks like. It's very similar in size to a Blanc 146. It's very close in, uh, in size and girth there. Uh, this is what it looks like in compared to a 149. And then this is what it looks like compared to the, uh, the Pelican M805. So on we go with a writing sample for the Edison Menlo pump filler. And this is a medium nib, and the ink is Waterman Mysterious Blue. This is what the ink looks like. Um, I, you know, I don't have that many comparisons. Uh, you know, maybe the 54th and Mass our 54th mass it's it's a little a lot lighter than that so um, it comes in this bottle right here um, which is interesting I like it just because when you go to fill it you can if you're getting a little bit low you can balance it on the side 
here, which is helpful when you're trying to get as much ink out of there as possible. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Dog. Uh, I mentioned it in the review, but this is a, a steel nib and it is very stiff. I really don't want to push this nib too much. Um, and just because it's stiff doesn't mean it's not comfortable. It is extremely comfortable to write with and extremely smooth. Um, as far as line variation, you can get very not much out of here. I, like I said, I really don't want to push it that much. And as far as wetness, Brian says he tunes it to a 7 out of 10, which I think is uh, a, an acceptable uh, explanation there. And in regard to reverse writing, it is very scratchy, but it can be done. And in regard to some fast writing and some initials, the flow on this is, is very good. I've never had any skipping problems or hard starts. Um, when the ink is full. Like I mentioned, once it gets kind of near the bottom, you might run into some issues, but it writes uh, a lot better when you have uh, a larger amount of ink in it. So I know that I have gushed over this pen uh, for a while, and in the end, I, I really feel that it's well-deserved. Um, I would strongly encourage you to check out Edison Pens. There's a link to their website down below. Uh, this is not a paid endorsement for them, uh, but uh, I really feel that they have an awesome product, and I, I really can't wait to get my hands on my next pen from them, which is currently on order. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.